episode four, Turnabout Succession. And that is the whole truth of this case. We in the Matrix? In order to understand it myself, I had to know the story of the last seven long years. <clears throat> yeah, I just woke up and, uh, I don't know. I was sneezing and coughing a lot, so my voice is weird. Meh. Nothing happens by chance. All is connected. What are you talking about? Oh! And now, you stand ready to begin the final chapter of this story. Oh my god. What is this? What is going- What is going on here? Will the defendant be found guilty or innocent? The decision is yours. You. October 7th. Oh, God. Hamas did nothing wrong. Anyway. Hey, Apollo. Look, on TV. Look, look. Yeah, um, I'm kind of busy. Whoa, look at that. He's the last gram grammary, all right. Amazing. Apollo, you should be watching this. Ow, ow, ow. What? What? I was writing about our last case in my journal. Why is I supposed to write things in records, Apollo, not journals? And why now? That case was three months ago. Hey, it's a long story. I did a lot, you know. I want to vacuum pack the feel of the moment for later. You wrote this, you spent three months writing this? Right now, I'm working the crowd by figuring out how Lamira disappeared. That's right, Uncle Violet did that illusion too. But you're missing him on TV right now! Ugh, I was just getting to the good part. I suppose I should watch a little TV with her. After all, her father's expecting me to look after her while, she's aw while he's away. What you're now seeing is a rehearsal for the greatest magic show on Earth. Happening right here at our very own Sunshine Coliseum. The Sunshine Coliseum. Hey, that's where the Gavner's concert was. Only three more days until miracles happen here, right before your unbelieving eyes. The legendary Troop Grammar Grammary is performing for the first time in seven years. That's going to be great. I'm so there. You and Daddy are coming too. The legendary Grammaries. If Truce's real father was still alive, he'd be on the stage performing miracles. I've got the tickets and everything. Here's yours, Apollo. Squeak! Ah, you are here. Working out or hardly working? Hey, Phoenix. Hey, how have you been? Hey there, stranger. Not exactly the kind of green I'd want to hear from my own kid. <laughs> you got no bitches to follow, though he has been gone a long time. <laughs> how goes it, Shoozy? Here, I got a present for you. Yay! Pudding! I love pudding! Ooh, it's farm fresh! And not just one pudding, but three whole cups! I'll have to pace myself. Well, I'm beat. That's right, Daddy. You're on a top secret mission. You've got to take it easy with the secrets, you know. Oh, <laughs> well, right you are. So you still can't tell us what your mission is. Uh, maybe it is time. It has something to do with you, anyway. Huh? With me? Ooh, maybe you're getting a top secret mission, too. Maybe you can be one of those guys. A spy. Can't it just be a defense attorney? Ha 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 ha. To be honest, telling you about the mission was my whole reason for coming here today. What? Tell me. You've heard of the jurist system, yes? The jurist system? Uh, that's right. The new legal system everyone's talking about. Oh, finally! Jury! Jury! Does that mean the rest of the games will have trial by jury? 
Have you heard of it, Apollo? Huh? Uh, maybe? Maybe not as many people are talking about it as I thought. The Juris system, huh? First things first, Damodeus, Deus. The plant. It intrigues you, doesn't it? Uh, not really. It's just the only thing in here that doesn't have some secret function. <laughs> no, not secrets. But lots of memories. And a name, too. Want to hear it? Not really. His name is Charlie, if you're curious. Really, I wasn't. <clears throat> so, Daddy, what's this jury system thing? Well, Trucy, do you know what a jury is? I've heard of it. Isn't that those people who sit in court in those old courtroom dramas? The ones who get to decide if a guy's innocent or guilty? Do you know Apollo? Only from TV. It's 12 people chosen from the community, right? <laughs> in Jap- Uh, I do my- Yonmi Park voice. In Japanifornia, there's no jury. It's just one judge, and if you're found guilty, they send you to the mines. Well, they're thinking about reviving that system. They're calling the new system the jurist system. No more doing whatever you like, your honor. Eh, not quite that harsh. The jurists cooperate with the judge. They help analyze the case from different angles. Ah, and there will be only six of them under the current proposal, right? Wow, you know your stuff, Apollo! <clears throat> Their findings directly affect the verdict. Hopefully, people will start taking the courts a little more seriously now. I feel like I'm on some kind of educational TV show. I want to see what the fuck is Japan California Joe Rogan is talking about. Like, this is tyranny from the majority, let me tell you. I fucking... The woke mob has infiltrated our court system. Our... Our... Glorious court system with their barbarous democracy. Starring Dr. Wright. No, that's a different guy. Ugh. And mascot Apollo, the perfect team. That explains it. I saw, like, some fan art on fucking... <laughs> DeviantArt. It was like, Dr. Wright, Assistant Choosy, mascot Apollo. That explains it. Mascot? Hey! So, what is this secret mission? The juror system is my mission, more or less. Are you gonna be a juror? Anyway, keep in mind that new ideas like this system are always risky, Apollo. Yeah. Too true. Everyone's got an opinion and they just talk and talk and nothing gets decided. Kinda like you, Apollo. Uh, I'm not that bad, am I? In any case, we're going to give it a shot. A test, if you will. I don't like tests. No, wait, I think I said this before. This actually did happen. This actually did happen in Japan, because for a while, they have only done... They've done trial without a jury, and... The judge decides anything, and of course there's pr no presumption of innocence, so the defense has to, you know, has to fight against those odds. But recently, they ha Japan has been trying out trial by jury. So, we could see a change, and, you know... That would also explain why in the later games it's all about a change in our legal system. And if Japan sticks with trial by jury, we could see a new uh, jury system in Ace Attorney 7. I'll be the one helping with that process, incidentally. Helping how? Well, for one, I'll be chair of the Jurist System Simulated Court Committee. The chair constructs the ideal situation, choosing the case, the jurist candidates, even the judge in the courtroom. Oh, and please give us a different judge. God, I love his honor, but he needs to fucking retire. Wow, it's like you have a real job. I was never that good at the piano, to be honest. Once a lawyer, always a lawyer, I guess. The trial's tomorrow, by the way. Don't miss it. The trial simulation, that is. A simulation, huh? Sounds interesting. So, what kind of case is the trial simulation about? Well, since it is the first run through of a new system, I wanted something simple. Good thinking. No sense wearing yourself out or something serious. True. The case is a murder. Oh, of course. That's not simple at all! 
by simple, did you mean that the defendant is guilty? Yes, most likely. Presumption of guilt, man. So, good luck, Apollo. Um, with what? With the trial tomorrow. Your defendant, of course. Recall that he said it had something to do with you. Go for it, Apollo. It's just a test case anyway, no sweat. Yeah, but there's still a verdict to be decided. And a potentially serious sentence. The most serious, in a worst case scenario. Is this gonna be like a Kobayashi Maru situation where no matter what I pick, someone gets hurt? Yeah, you mean the verdict's for real? That's not a test trial, that's a real trial! All the forms have been filed, there's no turning back now. The trial begins tomorrow at 10 a.m. Hope you can make room in your schedule, God. Why am I only hearing about this now? Ah, yes, it was a change this morning. I picked a new case. Eh? Something that happened last night. Valent Grammary? Hey Apollo, I know you're all excited about that secret mission, but what about this? The Troop Grammary Grand Magic Show. Huh? Oh, right. The card tricks. They're not card tricks! They're grand illusions, miracles, the apocalypse, heaven and earth will shake. S so what? That's the old days from now. It's at Sunshine Coliseum. Let's go. Let's go today. Oh, we can say hi to Uncle Valen. Oh, have fun. What? I can't go by myself. You know I'm not very outgoing. And she's only 15. Right. Why not go with her? But what about the secret mission? Oh, don't worry about that. You'll hear all about it tomorrow regardless. I don't trust that smile. He knows something that he's not telling me. Yippee! Now you can take me to the Coliseum! I suppose I wouldn't kill me to pop over there. Ah, Grammary. That reminds me. Oh, uh, what's this, Daddy? Isn't that the Silk Hat the Grammar? Isn't that Silk Hat the Grammary seal? Consider it a birthday present, Trucy. It's her birthday! Oh, so she's 16. Thanks, it's great, but... Today isn't my birthday. Okay, never mind. Hmm, good point. Uh, what day is it today, Apollo? Huh, today? Um, I think it's Recycle Your Plastics Day. And it's a Recycle Your Plastics Day present. Yippee, so it's plastic. I've given up trying to understand them. It's much easier that way. So what is it? Can I open it, Daddy? No. Mm. You'll need that envelope someday. Someday soon. Don't open it until then. Well, why didn't you just hold on to it until then? Because that would be the logical thing to do. Oh ho ho ho! Bird! Smack! An envelope about the Grammys, huh? Hmm. Yes they do, yes they do! Alright, so what case are you gonna use? You really wanna know, don't you? Of course I do! I mean, I'm going to be defending, aren't I? If all goes well, then yes, of course, this is just a test. We wanted everyone to start without preconceptions. A blank slate, as it were. There's a difference between having a blank slate and just being totally clueless. Whose dumb idea was that anyway? Well, mine. Committee chair, remember? Oh. Never meet your heroes, Apollo. Well, if you want to know that badly, I suppose. I could give you permission to examine the scene of the crime. Good! Th that's better! But you can't talk to anyone involved with the case. What? Then how am I supposed to defend? You let me worry about the details there. Remember, I'm in charge of this trial. All of it. But you don't want it to backfire, do you? Apollo, if I am in charge of the whole trial, that means the entire affair is my responsibility. For good or for bad. I just do what you can. And don't worry, I know what I am doing. Alright. I'd recommend going down to the detention center. Your client's waiting for you. You can ask about the scene there. But you just said I couldn't talk to anyone involved. Oh, you can talk to your client. If you can get her to talk. Well, time's a wasting. Yeah. Just make sure, yeah. Crime time. That's 20 minutes we've been waiting here. 20 minutes! Maybe I should complain. I'm sure that guard has better things to do than stand there pretending he doesn't see us. I have a name. What's your name? 
Wow. You don't even remember my name. We're so buried in our foe. You know, the minute we get angry, the client will show. It always works that way. Like shouting, a oh, waiter, and they're standing right behind you. Oh, God! Is our client going to be much longer? What are you talking about? Haven't you already started the meeting yet? Huh? <laughs> Where'd you come from? Well, anyway, uh, please have a seat. I'm nervous, Apollo. It's the silence. It builds suspense. Why don't you do something, Juicy? You're a magician, aren't you? That's right. Okay. Hey, I'm the amazing Mr. Hat. Oh! Hey, she passed out! From cringe. Miss Magic Underwear might have been a better bet. That's Magic Panties, Apollo! Um, uh, hi. Uh, well, I'm your defense. I really think it has to be fate, you know. And by fate, I mean destiny. Did you know I'm good with astrology? What are you doing, Apollo? Tell me, what's your sign? I can tell you mine if you'd like, Apollo. No, no, never mind. I just got carried away there. I seem destined to get difficult client, it seems. Um, so what's your name? Oh, uh, right. I'm supposed to introduce myself first. I'm Apollo. Apollo Justice. And I'm Juicy Wright. I know. This is getting nowhere fast. Hey, I know. Maybe you can tell us what happened? I'm your defense attorney, after all. Um, anything out of the ordinary happened lately? Well, the other day this tourist from out of town stopped to ask me directions. Later, Juicy. I feel like I need to ask directions myself here. Well, that was fruitless. But I think I understand despair a little better now. You did good, Apollo! Huh? Look! She's doing her nails! What? Are nails more important than defense? Is that it? Doing her nails? That's a fu- Oh, it's a bottle of nail polish. Let's go, Trucy. Excuse me. Ah! Could you read this? Um, sure. I feel like a teenager on a first date. And this is the love letter we passed from desk to desk at school. Stop looking so wistful and read it, Apollo. It, it's a business card with a name and an address. The name is Veramisham. Veramisham. I don't know if that's a pun. The address is for Drew's studio. Joey Drew? Oh, I, th I thought it was done with Bendy. And you're giving me this card because... <sighs> well, it looks like we're finished here. I wonder if Drew's studio is the scene of the crime. Let's go find out. Thanks for nothing, pig. Wow, this looks like... It looks like a studio. It's like life imitating art, or maybe the other way around. Hmm. But the tape on the ground there, it's a bit jarring. Yeah, looks like we found a crime scene. Oh, look at all those paintings. Hey, don't touch those. It's okay, I'm just looking. Mm. Huh? Apollo, look at this one. Looks half finished. You can still see the rough sketch underneath. But that's odd. The rough part doesn't look like the rest of the painting at all. Yeah, good point. That is odd. There's another painting underneath, fucking Da Vinci Code or whatever. All the paintings have a really different style, too. I thought I might find you two here. Oh! Emma, long time no see. Oh? It seems like I run into you far too often. I bet I know why you're here, too. You know about the trial simulation tomorrow. I've heard about it, sure. So, Mr. Wright chose you, huh? Oh, you don't even know what the case is about. Well, he was killed. Oh, 
The artist who owns the studio, that is. Mr. Drew Misham. Misham? And his daughter was put under arrest. Yeah, we just saw her at the detention center. It was funny, though. She seemed more like a victim than the kind of person who could commit murder. You know, I'm sorry. Not even by poisoning? That's how it was done, you know. Poison is a common way to get the job done when the murderer is a woman. <laughs> Misogynist. Poisoning? Anyway, Mr. Wright told me you'd be coming. Feel free to take a look around. I'll just be over here with my snackers. I can't talk to anyone related to the case this time around. Which means we better find out as much as we can here at the scene. Or else. Okay, don't talk to her. Got it. That letterbox looks funny sitting inside a room like this. Let's take a look. Empty. The other half of that letterbox is actually connected to the outside of the studio. Mr. Misham would have put his letters in there, and the postman took them away. Impressive that someone still writes letters in this day and age. Or wrote, rather. Respect the postal service. Is that an... Are those, are those grandma's ashes? Hey, there's a painting hidden back here. Hey, you're right. What if it's embarrassing somehow and he didn't want anyone to see it? Eh, that sounds like an artist. You certainly seem pleased by the possibility. Oh, it's the same thing. It's so normal. That's hardly something to get mad about. So Vincent van Gogh. Huh? What is it, Apollo? Well, doesn't this painting look like... Never mind. It looks like the other painting. I better get a professional opinion on this. It looks like the two paintings. Teacup. I imagine this coffee cup was for guests to use. Oh, never mind. Guests? Did the police already analyze this cup too? And not a trace of poison was found on that cup. So the killer was after Drew Misham alone. Huh, that's the victim's coffee mug. Aha! So the poison wasn't here! This is my first time seeing a real poisoned mug of coffee. I would hope so. Poisoned coffee. Not exactly, actually. What do you mean? No traces of poison were found in the coffee. What? You'll have to figure out the rest yourself. I'm officially not on your side, after all. That's... Uh-huh. He died because he accidentally drank the cup that he uses to... For his paintbrushes. Paint water. Eek, Apollo! That's where the body was! That's the spot where Mr. Drew Misham passed away. Misham? Drew Misham? Drew Misham? I don't know. He put the coffee mug to the lips. He put the coffee mug to his lips, and the next moment, there's quite a bit of paint on the ground. See that painted paint in there? He must have been working on that right up to the moment he died. Wow, a true artist to the end. Or maybe he started a year ago and was procrastinating. Yeah. I have projects from a year ago that I'm procrastinating. Oh, God. Apollo, look at this painting. You can see the rough sketch. Huh, looks like it was only half completed. Huh, that's funny. Do the rough sketch and the finished painting look totally different to you, too? They do, actually. What's that all about? Hmm. Look at that. No clues. Oh! Oh, wait. Hey, Apollo! This painting! I know it! Huh? Really? It's that story where the old woman is doing the wash in the river, and this giant peach comes along a floating on down. That might possibly be the strangest thing I've ever heard. Oh, yeah, and then there's a little boy inside the peach. Um, and that whole story was actually an allegory for the Japanese Empire uh, in World War II. Urgh. Is that a pufferfish? Oh, that's clearly a porcupine fish. Not a thing. They're not the same thing? You know what gets me? They've all got all these needles, right? But what's protecting that soft spot on the lower belly there? Nothing. Must remember to keep Trucy away from small round fish. Oh, God. <laughs> the, get her away from the lump fish. Don't let her touch the lump fish. No clues here. 
What? Oh! Well, what do we have here? Looks like a person thinking about something. Maybe they're worried. Like, what should I have for supper? A hot dog or a hamburger? You know, I've always wondered about that. Why is there a supper and dinner? Are they different meals or the same thing? Uh, maybe that's what this person's thinking about. Uh, supper comes after dinner. I know that from the, the Lord of the Rings. You've had one, yes, but what about second breakfast? What about elevenses? Afternoon tea, lunch, and dinner, supper. That stain doesn't look so healthy, Apollo. That must be the Blue Mountain stuff we've been hearing about. The what? Some tells me even Blue Mountain coffee isn't this blue. No, this stain is probably... Hmm, better ask Emma. She won't tell you! Or will she? Let's... Let's go here first. I already examined the... Hmm... What is that? What is all this equipment here for? It doesn't look very artistic, really. He had everything from a lathe to a laser cutter. Looks like he was ready to work on metals and wood, too. Though his equipment's a bit old, to tell the truth. Why would a painter even need all this? From the dust, I'd say he hasn't used this stuff for years. This corner doesn't fit with the rest of the studio. Oh, do you think I could borrow this? I want to cut a quarter in half to make a trick corny. This is a crime scene, Trucy. But these cost like 50 bucks at the magic shop. Let's take a closer look at this desk. Also, it's illegal to destroy U.S. currency. For some reason. Hmm. It's nothing about the way that figure is posed. I've seen that pose before. It's you, Apollo. See, you're making one of your flamboyant gestures. Please, I'm a professional. I wonder why it's posed like that. Coincidence? Pointing at something, eh? So this is Drew Misha. And this little girl must be Vera. Yes, they took that some years ago. They look close. A happy little family. Until you arrested his daughter. Ah! Well, he was already dead. Look, I was personally against that, okay? She doesn't seem very suspicious. Scientifically speaking. Uh-huh, right. A quill? Hey, Apollo, what's this feather thingy? Isn't that a pen? Like an old-fashioned quill pen? But it doesn't have a pointy end. That was most likely for sweeping detritus off the desk. No, the pointy end is right next to it. Wow, you sure know a lot, Emma. Bold and scientific, that's my motto. Exactly what about that was bold or scientific? It's right there, you fuck. Ooh, cute. Look at that tiny frame, Apollo. Tiny is right. That thing's barely two inches high. What picture would fit in that? They make tiny canvases, so this is probably for that. None, apparently. It's empty. There's no glass in it either. What's it doing sitting on the desk? This is a lesson for us all. Be sure to check the size when you buy frames. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Is this a journal? Wow, talk about a clue. Let's read it. What is it, Apollo? He didn't write the name of the killer, did he? He didn't... It's new. He didn't write a single line. You had me going for a while there. What's in there? This envelope has been opened and resealed. Ooh, I know how to do that. You take a pot of boiling water and hold the envelope up to the seam. The glue melts and it opens. Cool, huh? Whoever did this one was so delicate. You're right. Looks like they just ripped it open and stuck it back together. Huh? The postmark on this letter is from seven years ago. Why would someone open the letter and seal it again? Hmm. I better hang on to this. Got that, got that. Ooh. Look at all these paints, Apollo. There's so many. He's got like 20 kinds of red. We could repaint your suit, Apollo. How about this shade of green? That'll be enough of that, thanks. A microscope. Is this just for painting, Apollo? That would be a drafting table. Drafting? Basically, it's a tool for making precise diagrams. Wow, painting is harder than I thought. Why would a painter need a drafting table? Was he an architect, too? He was an expert. A connoisseur. 
He was number one. I wouldn't mind taking a close look at those paintings. You already did though. I just love oils. You know how they're so thick. Isn't that the word? Is that the word? Oil paintings, oil paintings, seeking. These paints are all dry. I'm just surprised at how different these are. Sea King, Sea King, oil paintings, oil paintings, Sea King. Don't miss the Dallas Mall Exponer Oster Up. Be there. The sketch part. Okay, I've examined everything. Now I just need to, uh,. I need to talk to you about... I bet Emma could help us out here. Don't forget, Flattery will get you everywhere with her, Apollo. Huh? What are you two ta whispering about? Well, I was thinking. I mean, what is it we always do when we run into it at a crime scene? What is it we always do scientifically? Ah, you know me too well. Okay. Okay, meaning we can get scientific now? Oh, I suppose. Eh, just this once. Bring me anything you find suspicious, and we'll check it out. Thank you. Um... Cup? Um, Emma, about this mug. There's a pale blue uh, residue on the rim. Huh? Uh, there! Yes, well, it's just a rumor. But I've heard there's a kind of coffee called Blue Mountain. What? I'm pretty sure it isn't actually blue, Emma. Ah, right. Okay, you got me. That's left over from my test and spray. Forensic science! I knew your hobby was behind us somehow, Emma. It's not a hobby. So, what kind of scientific stuff were you up to? In this spray, that's what. It turns blue when it touches poison. It was poison! So the poison that killed the victim was on this mug. That's right. See? It wasn't in the coffee. The killer applied it to the rim of the mug itself. Oh, I'm doing the wrong voice. for Fuck me. Wow, science is amazing. It certainly is helpful. Maybe Emma would be willing to help us out a bit more. You should try buttering it up, Apollo. They say flattery will get you everywhere. It's certainly worth taking talking to her a bit more. Um, about poison analysis. I was afraid you're going to ask that about that. See, this solution is used to test for atroconine. Atro huh? Atroconine. Atroconine. The deadly poison found in the autopsy. Uh oh, I know that spark in her eyes. She's getting excited. Best tread lightly. It's one of the most virulent poisons, but is absorbed into the body astonishingly slowly. It takes at least 15 minutes from the time of ingestion for adverse effects to show. Oh, and guess what? Recent research has shown... That's fine, really. We don't need to know all the gory details. I think I get it. You just spray this stuff on something you want to test, right? Uh, precisely. You can find even the slightest trace of poison with this. I want to try too, Emma. Pretty please? You don't have to ask twice. I already used it on everything suspicious, of course. Yay! Let's give it a whirl, Apollo! <clears throat> ah! What are you doing? I was just seeing if I got a reaction off of you. How's this for a reaction? Never do that again! I'm not poisonous! Tell that to those hapless witnesses on the stand. He's venomous. He got the venom! Let's just get down to checking for real poison, shall we? Ah, damn, I don't think there is anything. Too bad, no reaction there. I'm sure I'm checked out all the likely spots. Wait a second. What is it, Apollo? Did you spray that little desk over there? A the little desk? I don't think so. The spray probably can't reach that far, you know? Let's check it out, just to be sure. The tiny desk, aha! Let's see. Poison envelope. Aha! I... I tried spraying it earlier, but it, but it wouldn't work because it wasn't zoomed in. Eek! A reaction, Apollo! Ah! Where, where, where? The inside of that cute little brain. Look! Well, would you look at that? Nice going, Trucy. So he made a tiny painting with poison? Poison paint? I'm known to work magic. Never mind that I was the one who found it. Ugh, sorry, just... 
Eh, there was a Why would the inside of that frame have poison on it? It looks like we found the only other place that was poisoned in any case. Let's look at that evidence. Gotta be some. Hmm. Looks like you have to take this back part off to first put a bowl to the side. I'd have to be a really small photo to fend there. True. And that pale bluish stain. Why would there be poison on something like this? Well, there's one obvious reason. Whoever put poison in the coffee rubbed a bit on here, too. That's not very obvious, Juicy. Well, no, no, don't take off. Examine the picture, you... Come on, man. <laughs> We're good with idiots here. <sighs> Apollo, look, it's been opened once a year. You're right. I wonder if there's some way we can see what's inside. Uh, should I try to get it open and sink it back shut? Let's not tamper with the evidence, shall we? But it could be important. I got a better idea. How about, let's ask her. Uh, no, wrong button. Uh, Emma, about this. Oh, that. Yes, why, that's a bright red envelope. She sure is jumpy. Someone opened this, didn't they? Uh, my lips are sealed. Your lips are sealed? That's a first. You mean you know what's inside the envelope? Sure, I read it after all. Ah! You mean you were the one who ripped this open. <laughs> please, I would have steamed it open. But she did sneak a peek at it, apparently. You know that I have a powerful weapon on my side. It's a gun. Weapon? Yes, the use of tools. Highly specialized tools for information gathering. Tools I wouldn't mind getting my hands on. You should try flattering her, Apollo. They say a little praise can open big doors. I've heard that one, but it's good advice. Let's try talking to her some more. Ah, right. About that envelope we found. I was wondering if you could help us out with that tool you were mentioning. <laughs> you want to know about my tool, do you? It's called an x-ray analyzer. X-ray? Like the x-rays you get at the dentist? Uh, that's right. At least that's what I call it. Huh? It has a real name, but it's much more complicated. The X-ray spectralization. Something. How am I supposed to remember all that? So basically, it lets you see inside things, like envelopes. That's right. You're sharp, Juicy. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that in practice, of course. Actually, to tell you the truth, I'm not really sure how it works scientifically. Can I try it out, Emma? Please? Oh, I suppose. Of course, I've already checked out everything suspicious myself. All right, let's give it a spin, Apollo. Uh, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, just seeing if I could see through your hair, but it's like lead. Dude, you are going to give him cancer. Point that thing at me anymore and it might fall out. Anyone need an x-ray machine to see through it. Let's just get down to business, shall we? Right, let's test it out on a sample first. Just so happens that I have a lottery ticket here. Hmm. Just like a real envelope. You set the sample in the device like so. I don't see anything. Patience, there's no need to get all antsy. Look at the right side of the screen. That's the layer view of the envelope. Layer view? You've got it set to display the outside of the envelope now, see? Actually, it's quicker to just have you give it a try. Turn the dial there with... <clears throat> for me, will you? Oh, so I don't turn the dial. The game does it for me. That's right. That's how you choose what depth you want to scan. Hey, I got something. See? That's how you can read the letters on the ticket inside. Cool, huh? Except, I can't read them. I'll just turn the dial a little more. Ugh. What you have to understand is that a sheet of paper isn't really flat at all. When you zoom in that much, you see that paper is like a bunch of hills and valleys. Wow, really? This x-ray device uses a beam with a wavelength of only 0 0.05 microns. It breaks cards down into thin layers so it can only show what's written on that layer. 
I'm not entirely following you, but what good is it if you can't read anything? That's why we go on to step two. Try rubbing the image of it, if you would. Rubbing? Like, going over the image with blah, 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 while holding on to A? Oh, I see numbers. There. That faces the image on the screen. Now, turn the dial again, just a little. Oh, it has a touch. Good. Now you can rub this image to fix it, too. Hey, I get it. We just keep doing this until we've got the whole thing. Exactly. Not bad. Neat. Let's do some more. Ah. Uh, 016. It's... It wasn't a winner. Hmm. I mean, I already know it. I don't have to... Oh! Bubba. Okay, let's print this one out. Try again. Hmm. Does this mean I have to buy another one to win? Don't go to the lottery! You never win it! Well, it's Emma's ticket. Let her buy another one. Better chance of getting struck by lightning. It's okay, there's no need. But see, this is the true pa hidden power of my weapon. Neat, huh? Uh, now let's try it out on the real thing, shall we? Okay. I'm doing this all by myself, you hear me? Don't... Don't cross me. Shout out to Jesus. Wait a minute. Oh, no, no, wait. Oh, that was just the end. I didn't need that. I needed the fucking... Can I start over? Chat. Whatever. Oh. Oh, no. It was the inside of the envelope. Huh, okay. Oh. Okay, let's print this one out. Jester drew me shall have designated deposited the hundred thousand dollars in the designated account. Someone deposited a hundred thousand dollars into Mr. Misham's account. His paintings must be really valuable. There's another page in there. Care to take a look? Does he draw NSFW? What are his rates for NSFW? You bet I do. If you're going to want to read someone's mail, you might as well read it all. Here it goes with the second page, then. Oh. Oh. Sign the papers and send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within three days. I need to remind you not to speak of this to no one. So it was a letter about payment for one of his paintings. Why all the secrecy, though? And... And what? Why was this letter the only one in here? It's seven years old, right? Maybe it has some special significance to him. Well, Emma? Oh, indeed. She knows something she's not telling us. Looks like she's keeping mum about it. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can get her to examine the... This, if I just flatter her. I was wondering if you could take a look at this. Oh, fuck, man. Some of them knew she'd get around to science. Science. Okay, uh... Oh, that? Quite good, isn't it? Er, that's not what I wanted to ask you about. You wanted to examine it, is that it? I'd be happy to let you if you had a good reason. But without that, sorry. I guess she wants us to do a little footwork on her own first. Oh, well, uh, I... This one looks identical. I was wondering about this painting here. Ah! That one! What about it? What about it? Yeah, what about it, Apollo? Take a closer look at it. Both of you. 
Now, look at this one. This is the third painting he was working on. Hey, they're the same! I was hoping he wouldn't find that. You're right, though. Drew Misha must copy in this painting. Wow, it's pretty good. Copying a painting. Well, four. Practice. Now, okay. about this painting. But I did have the fuck it. Oh my god. Navigating this game, it's like. This is what autism is like, let me tell you. What am I supposed to do, huh? Huh? Let's ex- No, Ron won. Examine this again. It's clearly a different- There's a different painting underneath it! Wait. This is a peach or a plum? What happens if I present it a second time? Hmm? Uh, same shit. Same shit. This, um, Drew Misham was some kind of artist? Apparently, did a lot of illustrations for books I hear. I had a lot of female fans, too, for what it's worth. Oh, well, I guess this stuff is kind of pretty. Like that oil painting over there, for instance. Um, yeah. That wasn't one of his illustrations, actually. Huh? So it was a standalone painting or something? Is that what it, she means? He was an odd bird, Misham. Hadn't shown his face to anyone until the end. What do you mean, to anyone? He was always locked up in here, in this studio, apparently. His only connection to the outside world was the letters he'd put in that letterbox there. Letters? Do people still write letters? What do you mean, Apollo? I mean, when was the last time you wrote a real letter? Don't most people use email and stuff these days? Not Mr. Misham. Couldn't stand technology, it seems. He did everything by mail. Maybe he thought that way was more artistic, you know? Uh, can I please... In any case, the only person besides him allowed in here was his daughter, Vera. Oh, you mean the killer? The suspect, please. We took some fingerprints, of course. The only ones found in the room were Mr. Misham's and Vera's, basically. Basically. Actually, last night, Mr. Misham gave an interview to a reporter for the first time. It happened during the interview, apparently. His first interview ever? Could you tell us a bit more about what happened the night of the murder? Like I said, last night was the first time someone from the outside came into this studio. I guess mysterious painters who never go outside make for good articles. And it just so happened that he died the night of his first interview. At around 9pm every night, Bear always made him a cup of coffee. Last night he drank his usual coffee, then suddenly became violently ill. And he died? Yeah. She poisoned him on the night of his interview? Wouldn't the reporter see? The reporter did it, you utter... Ugh. She wasn't... He wasn't near Mr. Misham when she brought her father his coffee. He was checking out some equipment in the back of the room. Supposedly, that's why she didn't notice he was there. It was the reporter who called the police, in fact. See, this reporter is getting more suspicious to me. Why is she the suspect? If anyone was suspicious, it's the reporter. Yet the reporter never got near Mr. Misham's coffee. Even Vera acknowledges that. Regardless, I want to know more about this reporter. So about this reporter. I can't tell you much. I hear he's going to be a witness tomorrow, though. Yeah, he definitely did. I thought so. I'll never forget that face, but what was his name? Oh, right. Brushel. Brushel? He's after a scoop to sell the papers. To the papers. So a reporter comes for an interview with a painter. His first interview ever, and that night he's killed. Seems strange to you? Really strange. It does raise a few questions. I'd like to speak with this reporter if I could. Well, I hear he's on the beat today, too. He said something about covering a magician. 
Magician. Well, if it's not true, see, that leaves only one other person. It wasn't a valid grammar by any chance, was it? Yeah, something like that. He's got some big show lined up, I hear. So he's out interviewing Valent Gramry. Looks like I'll be heading out to that Coliseum again sooner than I thought. Here, we'll give you that reporter's card if you want. But wait, what about the... The painting! I have a good reason, you fuck! The... I guess you gotta have a good business card if you want to work freelance. Do you work for Aperture Science? Really? What's this? A camera lens finder? That's the Aperture Science logo. Do reporters take photos too? I guess if he's freelance, he'd have to. Maybe you should try being a prosecutor and a defense attorney. You'd always win. Why don't I become a rock star too while I'm at it? Oh! Uh, oh, fine. I gotta go. Thanks for nothing! Woohoo! This is it, Apollo! The place where magic and dreams converge! Just a while ago, it was the place where murder and nightmares converged. Let's go say hi to Uncle Balin. What about the case? Whoa! Uh, 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 uh. Only a performer laughs like that. Leon Mistruce. How often I hoped we'd meet again, only to tell myself it was an impossible dream. Hee <laughs> hee, Uncle Van, how's it going? I'm glad to see you too. Of course you are. Humility is definitely not one of his stronger traits. Well, Mistruce, how does one how does the day find you? If you've come to give me flowers, do it after this show, I beg you. Actually, we came to wish you good luck. And congratulations on your big magic show. Oh, but it is I who wish to congratulate you. Not everyone is so lucky as to witness miracles such as the one I shall perform. Yeah, yeah, you're amazing. We get the picture. The world will watch in wonderment as Magnifi's illusions are reborn. Here on stage by my hand. Ah, uh, shit. Uh, have you talked to this guy? So what journalist was here on a story? All eyes in the universe are upon my stage. All pens seek to commit its mysteries to paper. Um, his name was Brushel. 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 I think he remembers him. He doesn't look too happy about it. Brushel. That cloying smell of mint when he smiles. Yes. Um, could you tell us more about him? What did he want? Okay, rest of that don't matter. A man by that name called on me just now. Just now? A valiant's vision is always toward tomorrow. Valiant's feet step always forward. That is all. That's all. Very confusing. I am to perform a big magic show, yes? I wanted someone to cover it. Yet he had ears only for that incident. That incident. In any case, I requested that the rapacious reporter remove himself. So a painter has died, what of it? It is but a footnote in the footlights compared to the magic of grammar. Uncle Fallon, do you know where the reporter went? I recommended he visit that place popular with penalized perpetrators. The detention center? He was a rude individual. Might I see that card? Uh, sure. He would tear apart my respectability, I will tell apart him. Ooh, here it comes, Apollo. I'll go on's big magic trick. Is he going to fix the card? I'm not sure that qualifies as big magic. What happened to the big magic? Ha 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 ha. It is not, is it not more miraculous for something, for to stay it? He must have really not liked that journalist. Well, okay, to the detention center. Mm. 
Ah, oh, you're here to see Vera Misha. Yes, that's right. She's in the medical office at the moment. Medical office? Is she okay? She's just lying down, said she didn't feel so good. I'm sorry, but I can't allow any meetings at the moment. Most annoying client ever. Guess we should come back. Okay, uh, Drew Studio. Uh, I should still talk to... Let's see. You know, but it could be important. Everyone's talking about the big magic show. Is it true that the Grammary Miracle is back after a seven-year absence? And Miss Juicy, I must apologize. This show and this honor should have been his. Annie. My co-magician in trade, Zach Grammary. If that terrible thing hadn't... It's okay. Your father was a great magician, Trucy. If he were alive, then I, Valent Grammary, would have been proud to stand upon the stage as his assistant. Thanks, Uncle Valent. You know, I'm happy you're doing the show. But thank, we got to see the Magnifi's, Great Magnifi's Illusions again. She really is looking forward to this, isn't she? Magnific Grammary. My mentor, the Magnificent Magnifi Grammary, was a true deity among musicians, magicians, a creator god who gave birth to magic and illusions that defied our very imaginations. It was so little when I last saw him, but I still remember his shows. He did wheelies on a sports car through the air above the audience, and then sped off to outer space faster than the speed of sound. I'm guessing that memory was a bit embellished. For seven long years, the world has been waiting for a miracle to match his. As heir to the Grammarie Troop secrets, it falls, it falls on me to provide one. It is my God-given destiny. Um, yes, you, nameless fates who speaks for the nameless masses. How can I help you? If the world is waiting, why did you hold off for seven long years? <clears throat> it appears the lad is uninformed. Perhaps you have heard of the magic known as law which governs our land. Uh, I have, though I'm not sure it qualifies as magic. The performance of Magnifi's miracle was impossible. A certain law prevented it for seven years, but no more. Seven years. That phrase sure likes to pop up, doesn't it? And why was that? A little matter called performance rights, Miss Trucy. Can you tell us about these performance rights? Magnifi's magic relied on an incredibly innovative trick. Idea. A trick, if you will. That trick was considered his property, and as such was protected by property laws. Intellectual property, maybe. Magnifi knew this and bequeathed it in his will. To one person. You mean him? Yes, Miss Trucy. It was your father. Zach Grammary was an inheritor of the Grammary Miracle. And yet, as you well know, he is gone. Well, that means Trucy has... Shouldn't Trucy have the rights to it? He disappeared suddenly seven years ago. I think I see where this story is going. Once a person is classified missing for a certain period of time... They're considered legally dead, correct? Oh, shit. In all absoluteness, those rolled up sleeves conceal your competence with you. That certain period of time of which you speak is seven years. Uh... <laughs> yes, Miss Juicy. Who it pains me to say it. This past spring, April to be precise, was the time. Your father was legally declared deceased. In the absence of a former will, the secrets of our mighty Mentor Magnifi passed to me. This was, in fact, stipulated by the will by Magnifi himself. Is that how it works, Apollo? Yeah, it's called death in absentia. He's declared missing permanently. Aww. Anyway! So, this woman, Vera. She's Mr. Misham's daughter, right? Yep, a real sickly girl ever since she was little. Hardly ever went outside. Uh, Drew Misham, Drew Misham, Vera Misham, Vera Misham, I don't know. She did kind of give off a withdrawn sort of aura. She was homeschooled by her father, apparently. 
It was quite a scene when they took her to the detention center. She was screaming about how she'd die if they took her outside. Agoraphobic. They're making her go outside. That does sound like a scene. In the end, she agreed to leave if she was allowed her good luck charm for company. Her good luck charm? Apparently, she has this charm that magically gives her the courage to go outside. Why can't I ever get a normal client? But why would a shunning daughter kill her own dad? No longer married. So about the poison, it was found to be in his coffee, right? No, not precisely. Not pre Ugh, we already know about this. Fucking hell. About this painting. Why the fuck? What a pretty business card. Looks like a postcard almost. And on the back, huh? Why don't you use the space on the back for self-portrait or caricature? Hmm. She's wrong. Hey, my hair's not that spiky. I want to see the business card. What did it look like? Do not open until the time is right. Hmm. Motherfucker. It was worth a try. Maybe there's an illusion on the ticket. No. Hmm. Wait a minute. This is new. I don't know some kind of green paint being toxic. I don't think they saw the kind anymore. And the poison was atroconine anyway. Oh, well, maybe it was atroconine paint. Mysterious poison frame. Okay. Uh, can I fucking... Ah! Right, she's gone. No, no, wait a minute. Oh! Uncle Valent, is something wrong? Juicy, where did you get this? Huh? Uh, Daddy gave it to me. Your... My partner, that... No, no! My other daddy, Phoenix Ray! Why now? Why would you... <laughs> Lord Daddy! <laughs> Lord Daddy. It's kind of stretching the whole archaic thing a bit. Yeah, he's... I mean, he's definitely Daddy. <laughs> Oh, who said that? The signature upon the back. Do you recognize it? That belongs to none other than Zach Grammary. What? Did Daddy sign this? Uh, might I be so bold as to open it? I'm sorry, but I can't leave. Uh, Juicy, I love you, but you gotta, like... You have three dads, don't you? Three dads. Phoenix, Zach, and Edgeworth. You gotta just... You gotta, um... But, do different names to uh, differentiate them. Uh, even if it's just Daddy One and Daddy Two, One Daddy Two, Daddy Red, Daddy Blue, Daddy. I'm sorry, but I can't let you. I can't let you do that. <clears throat> What's in this envelope? I wonder. Now the time has come when I must return to make my prestidigitation preparations. By your leave, Miss Juicy. Thanks, Uncle Valent. <coughs> Three days from now, make ready for a miracle. <sighs> what do you think that journalist was after? That boner. <laughs> and why did Aunt Violent react like that to this envelope? I think it's time to pay the detention center another visit. Uh. Mm. I think I hear what you're saying. We're all doing it for the money, end quote. No, 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 not at all. Looks like someone's already meeting here. Maybe that reporter? Uh, I gotta, like, do, like, a think of a voice to do for, like, people whose name and face haven't been revealed yet. And now, how you doing? Who might you be? Ah, uh, sorry, we didn't know someone was already here. Uh, I'm Apollo Justice, attorney at law. 
Talk about a nervous monk. He is literally the nerds he boat. <laughs> you, you're Justice Joe? You know me? I do I know you? Of course I know you. And it stares down witnesses on stand till they spill beans. End quote. Uh, that's not true. What's he writing? Oh, what's the word? What's the hat? What's your major? <laughs> Sorry. Are you a reporter by any chance? Whoa! You! You're choosing! Uh, am I famous? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Choosy Wright hates carrying a bag. Puts everything she owns in her panties. End quote. Eh, that's so not true! Uh, just hold on to your breeches there. I'll wrap up this interview in a jiffy. This is like that one episode of My Little Pony where the cutie mark crusaders, they become, uh, news reporters and, like, they just take pictures of everyone in Ponyville and then just make shit up about, make, make up the headlines. And then everyone gets mad at them. But, like, it's very clear they're being forced to do this because, uh, of, like, societal pressure. And, like, I don't really get the ending where, basically, they just get shamed into stopping the, into quitting, uh, news portions or news editing or whatever. But, like, it should have just been the main six sitting them down, having a talk. Like, listen, this, I, I this, this isn't you. I know Apple Bloom wouldn't. Uh, print lies about her own sister unless she was being forced to. So, like, uh, who is making you do this? Like, that should have been the... There's so many idiot plots in My Little Pony. So, God, I think I know what's going on here. Garden rooms is my life. What else could I possibly need? End quote. Oh, no. How many times do I have to tell you this? Look, I've got work to do. You will deal with him. Um, did you come here to interview the guard? Oh, wait, what a pickle. <laughs> I can't use what I talk. I have to interview someone or go come crazy. End quote. Huh. Ooh, wee. <laughs> Mr. Roylet, did you or did you not text that little girl? Um, well, technically it wasn't me. Who was it then? Ooh, wee. When's Justin Rowling gonna invoke Globda? I invoke Globda! And then you just fight Stan Harmon to the death in a cage match. I should have guessed. And then he loses. Who? Death! Where are my manners? Name's Brushel. Spark Brushel. I'm not picky. Journalist just closes eyes. Writes. End quote. What's that nauseatingly strong mint smell every time he grins? Toothpaste. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! He has the same- He has the same quill! He has the same quill as the other guy! Mm. Until you've been interviewed by me, you don't know what thrilling is. Wild romp through crossroads of mayhem. Madness. End quote. I can see that. He's writing something again. We, do we have neutral toothpaste news place that doesn't taste or smell like anything so that I want him dumb brushing my teeth I can just go straight to enjoying some food? Or orange juice. Well, if he's a reporter, maybe he knows something. Ugh. So, Mr. Brushel, you're a journalist? Ah, me? Look, let me say one thing for the record here. Y yes? I'm the interviewer. You'll understand, yeah? I'm the one asking the questions here. End quote. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm, for instance, you think a movie director watches movies? Yes, all the time. Well, I think he probably does. Exactly. I knew you'd understand. Huh? What? Huh? So, the night of the murder, you were at Drew's studio? Who, oh, me? Look, let me say one thing for the record. Y yes? I may look calm and collected, but I'm busy. Real busy. Always on the road. Journalist always buys one-way tickets. Never looks back. End quote. Room with. Down a one -way street. I can understand that philosophy, but you want to know the thing about one way tickets? Once you use them, they're gone. Wrong way! Down a one way street! All because you have to give them to the guy at the airport. 
True enough. But don't they give normal tickets away too? Exactly. See? It's the same thing. What? What is? Ah. Roll it! Do the roller street! <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. So, you went to do a story on Drew Misham. Drew Misham. And he never had a story done about him before? That's right. Look, let me say one thing for the record here. What? what? I'm sure you're going to want to know about my source. <laughs> my source. <laughs> um, source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. What tipped me off to do? Why do the interview in the first place? Hmm? Well, yes. Look, it's like... 10,000 spoons and all you need is a knife. Oh, I got it. Say there's this burger joint with fabulous ketchup. Okay, so imagine a burger. <laughs> you think the burger guy's going to tell me where he got it? Ugh, this is like the fucking analogies in Danganronpa 1 when, like, Celeste Ludenberg, like, explains why she wants milk tea. Well, let's say I go to a restaurant and the, the milk tea... Just say you want your milk tea prepared a different way, for God's sake! At the supermarket, maybe? Exactly. See? That's what I'm talking about. I think I may have actually understood that one. Oh, it actually works. Eat your hamburgers, Apollo. Well, there's nothing I can talk about, really. Walls have ears, eyes, especially glass walls with speakers, end quote. Right, I guess we'll leave then. Ah, but since you're here, might as well tell you a little tidbit of news I saw, for just for the heck of it. Sure, tell us. Tell us for the heck of it. I remember it like it was yesterday. I've seen a movie on a trip and wandered into this burger place with amazing ketchup. With an article in a tabloid caught my eye. Famous oil painting stolen from Archie's Gallery. End quote, I believe it was. An oil painting. Happens every day, right? But I thought I'd seen that painting somewhere before. A painting of a giant peach floating down a river. Someone stole an oil painting of a giant peach. Journalists can smell scoop better than burgers. End quote. Would it happen to have been this painting? Ah, right. Let me go on the record here. Yes? I know what you're going to say. Brush, I'll take this. Write a brilliant column. End quote. I don't think so. Look, buddy, I write brilliant columns about one thing. And that's food. What? Trying to understand. What? What could he possibly be writing? He didn't listen to a word I said. <gasps> yeah. I'm going to back to the studio. Well, how'd it go? Find anything out? Actually, there was one thing I wanted to check with you. Uh, well, what's with that scary face you're making? And what's with the I know something but I'm not telling face you've got going, Emma? <sighs> now can I fucking... This one. This painting came from behind that dresser. Uh-huh, yes, so it was stolen, though. I was hoping you wouldn't figure that out. Do you think you could tell us a bit more about this? You know, since we already know. I suppose. It's what you think. Drew Misham was a forger. A forger? There is nothing wrong with tracing art. Change my mind. Fucking intellectual property is a fucking scam. It has never once protected any independent artist. So what exactly is a forger? Well, basically, it's someone who makes forgeries. Oh, but what if, what if your content gets fucking, uh, parted? What if someone, uh, makes, uh, traces over your art without your permission? I don't give a crap. My art, th my art ain't worth shit. If you can find a way to make it look good, g good on you. I would, I would kiss you if I... Well, basically, it's someone who makes forgeries. Fakes, in other words. Faker! Fakes! Oh, like red from Animal Crossing. Copies of an original. Exact copies, so precise you can't tell them apart. Well, why not just photocopy them? The big problem with forgeries is that people try to sell them as the real article. It's a crime, of course. So Jew Misham was... a criminal? I'm afraid so. He received money to create elaborate forgeries. You know, if this game really did take place in America, all these victims, like, 
nobody would give a shit about the trial because we're all like, well, I mean, the victim wasn't uh, perfect. He, he had a criminal record. He did the bad stuff. And, like, people would then be arguing about whether it's ethical to come before she's ignoring the fact that a man died. A man is dead. He was murdered in cold blood. So we live in a society. I see. Actually, that's why I brought this here in the first place. What do you mean? When you're trying to determine if a painting is a forgery, a rough sketch underneath can be a valuable clue. So the rough sketch is like practice for the real thing. Like doing a magic trick in front of a mirror before you go on stage. Mm, but not in the case of a forgery. Not necessarily. Anyway, you know what the finished project is going to look like after all. Oh yeah, I guess it would. That's why I brought this. I'm going to use it to see what's under the paint of the finished prices. pieces. I get it now. Not that I really needed to go such lengths. Seeing as how one of the paintings was only half finished anyway. Can we look at it in any way? So it'd be neat to see Mr. Misham's rough sketches. Kind of like what he was drawn when he thought no one was looking. True. That would be interesting. And maybe valuable for our case. You should try buttering up, Apollo. Flattery will get you everywhere, they say. Hmm. Maybe I should ask Emma to help us out. Okay. I kind of wanted to see the rough sketch under this painting. And I was wondering if your tool there might do the trick. Oh, fine, fine. Just this time, though. Let's check it out. <laughs> She's such a cutie. Oh, they're down, down. Oh! Nom, 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 nom. Slowly. You know, it's possible it's only just like a teeny tiny dose of radiation. Since it's not like we're trying to go look through a body, just a sheet of paper. Canvas. What does this remind you of? Okay, let's print this one out. Hmm. Huh. It's like a guy playing a guitar on fire. It's Clavier! What? What the heck? Wow, he really blows. The finished paint isn't anything like the rough. Devices like mine didn't exist until recently. He probably thought he could draw any sort of thing he wanted for the two for the rough. Well, why would he What do you mean? Well, in the past, you could only analyze the composition of a rough sketch. Composition? A composition. In other words, the traces of charcoal between paint and canvas. So you could tell if there had been a rough sketch. But not what it looked like. Ah, I think I follow you. So, in essence, it wouldn't matter what was underneath the finished paint. Some pros would actually paint out a rough sketch entirely. Then do a completely new painting on top of that. So Mr. Misham was drawing whatever he wanted before painting over them. Still seems like he's shooting himself with the foot, but eh, whatever. Is there a problem with that? Not particularly, but something about the sketch itself is kind of odd. You're awfully silent all of a sudden, Apollo. You think you could check out one of the other paintings? Well, sure. You like this attack and stuff, don't you? Yeah. Pufferfish. What the fuck? The noodle cart! What is going on here? This one too. 
What's wrong, Apollo? You look so serious all of a sudden. Um, you think they could just look at the last of these? Fine by me. Knock yourself out. Uh, this is reminding me of that one episode of Amazing World of Gumball. Great show. Where, like, they find that, that woman who, like, paint... Who, like, does paintings that all of, like... Stuff that happens to the Watersons. But they're all dated to before those things actually happen. So her paintings predict the future. And the episode ends... With her, like, painting the Watersons running away from a catastrophe. It's like, it was actually a pretty terrifying ending. I loved it. Poker. Okay, let's print this one out. Poker. What the heck is all this? You hesitate to ask why you're getting so excited. Are you sure your device isn't leaking some kind of strange radiation? Trosie, look at these three sketches. Do you notice anything? <laughs> there! Now you're both white as sheets. What's going on? These sketches are of the three cases I worked on. What? The murder in the poke room at the Borscht Bowl Club. The dead man pulling the noodle stand. And then... The events that transpired during the Gavinor's concert. What could it mean? How could he have drawn those things? And why? That's what I want to know. Wait, is True Misham your father? Give me a break. Does that even seem remotely possible to you? Come on. I'd never even heard of any Drew Misham before. I hadn't even seen a picture of him. But they were my cases. Drawn on his canvas. Every single one of them. It couldn't have been a coincidence. Just who was this Drew Misham? And what did he have to do with me?